In this video, I show you how to use ChatGPT to massively streamline your report writing as an architect. The example I use is a planning report and I give it certain chapters to basically fill in the text for me, give me brief history of an area, give me some ideas on what is a good piece of urban design, um, what benefits there are to have a certain orientation on a site, it will dramatically speed up your workflow. All I would say is make sure that you're checking what it gives you, but nonetheless, I will be using this um, as we move forward. So let's jump into the video. One of the most time consuming things that we do at our practice is the creation of planning reports that justify your design, your process and all that other stuff. And wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that would just help you fill in some of these text boxes? So what I'm gonna do is, and with with no, um, no attempt at this previous to this video, I'm gonna see if I can use chat GPT to help me fill in some of these areas because it takes a hell of a long time to research and generate these bodies of text. And that on top of all your other responsibilities, it can get a little bit much. So first and foremost, I'm gonna see if it can give me something specific to where I am from, which is Liverpool. So if I type in, um, first and foremost, I believe you're meant to, you're meant to kind of introduce yourself a little bit. You're meant to like, kind of like talk to the thing rather than just ask it straight questions. So first and foremost, I'm just gonna say, uh, hello, I'm an architect um, from the UK. Um, I'm currently writing a planning report. Can you help me? And the responses are, are instant. And by the way, we are using a, a paid version of ChatGPT here. And it's GPT-4. So general advice and guidance. I'm not really, I'm not really after planning advice. That's fine. Just, just, just wanted it warmed up to the idea of of what I'm in, of what I'm after. So something like, oh, okay, thanks. Firstly, I'd like a short write-up about the Baltic Triangle area of Liverpool. And that looked about right <laughs> initially. Now, my advice would be to uh, fact check some of these, obviously, but even the way it's writing it is is quite pleasant. Um, you know, it's even touched on the Baltic Creative CIC and everything. That that is absolutely <laughs> mind blowing. That um, so a generic piece of text there, the local area. I can now save myself a lot of messing, give it that sort of prompt, just give it a little check of course, and then I am away. That's page done. So I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just gonna ask that to stop because it's, it's, it's rattling on a bit now, but you get the idea. What about if I say, can you give me a, say a 30 year history? of the Baltic Triangle in Liverpool. Yeah, that's right. The the industrial use did the, has declined. There has been regeneration and there has been growth of a cult, you know creative and cultural hub. And um, you probably add in there a little bit of you know residential development as well. And then it's splitting the history into those three those three eras, and then it's it's going on to explain it. So again, I'll just get it to stop. That is ridiculous. I actually didn't think it would um, it it would give me something that specific. So there we go. Local area history sorted. Now it's not going to. So I'm even going to attempt this one. It's not going to give me like a critical analysis. Um, I don't think anyway. I wouldn't even know how to ask it this. A critical analysis of the site. However. 
let's say for argument's sake that your site is predominantly south facing, which this is. Let me ask it that question. So an opportunity could be the site's orientation. So if I say, are there architectural benefits to a south facing building? Let's have a think. Yeah, there we go. Several benefits. Yeah, that's right. Solar gain. It's a little, I must admit, it's, it's generating this one a little slower. Maybe it's just having to have a little think. Uh, natural light, that's an obvious one. And then passive solar design. Thermal mass elements, that's spot on. Concrete being the easiest one. Regulate temperatures. And so on and so on. So, again, you know, you, you always have to give it a little pass yourself, but... I, I think that's a, a decent answer. Probably not as good as, as some of the others, but that, that's a decent answer. Get you started at least on things like orientation. Um, local plan and policy, it did mention the, um, let me just see, it did say it can't, it can't give any guidance on that. So I'll just say, do you know anything about Liverpool's new Low, new local plan, you know, in, in planning terms. This might be too specific. Hold on. <laughs> the plan aimed to replace the UDP. That is right. Set up the development strategy for the city. The purpose was to guide new development and allocate land. I don't have the most up-to-date information. Okay. That's not bad, though. So that's not a bad answer, to be fair. So you could probably tease a bit more out of it there to at least introduce the section. But I'm fairly confident that it then couldn't go into this very specific policies of the site. But that's where a good planning consultant comes in very handy. You can get that from them, or obviously you can do your own research. Now, design development. What can we get from it in terms of, um, let's just, let's say proportion. Can you describe, um, uh, I'm trying to think, can you help me explain the proportions of a building um, with the idea of a bottom, middle and top to the building where the base is slightly larger containing shops, shops, shops and cafes etc. concept you're referring to architecture yeah yeah Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah visually pleasing this is probably the most common architectural technique that I use the base of the building's lower segment typically designed to be slightly larger in the upper sections this part often accommodates commercial spaces. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that right away. That is that is unbelievable. I nearly swore then. <laughs> um, so that so that, that that's amazing. And then let me just try and find one more. You, you're getting the idea here. Um, it, well, let, let's do this one. Urban scale. So if I can if I can get a little bit of a little bit of something from it with regard to what you know what constitutes good urban design. And then with that introductory. Um, Words basically, those introductory words, 
we can then start to stitch our design into that. So let me just, let me just stop that. Middle is the majority of the build and design of the middle is generally more repetitive than the, honestly, that, that, is, that is absolutely spot on that. Um, so then I will say, um, finally, one more question. Uh, I have a chap there. I have a chap there. Uh, and again, I, I'm, I'm talking to it like, like a human. I think I believe that's the best way to do it. So finally, one more question. I have a chap there on urban design. Can you help me introduce it by explaining what constitutes good urban design in the realm of architecture? Yeah. That's spot on. The realm of architecture plays a crucial role in shaping the physical layout and character of a city while enhancing the quality of life for its inhabitants. I mean, how good is this? Now, just while that's writing away, consider this use case as well for things like your tender submissions. Or I mean, I mean, it, it, it could it's help. It could help you write CVs and things like that in an in an architectural language, like um, the way that it's feeding this back to me. Um, obviously, this use case is for planning reports, but there are many reports and presentations that we create as architects, and I think ChatGPT is an amazing tool to streamline your process and also give you ideas. Now. Actually, look at that. See where it says human scale there? That's funny because um, we always follow it with a human scale, actually. So I'm quite quite pleased by that. Um, and in here, you know, talking about mixed use development, public spaces, it, it, it could actually start to generate some ideas for you as well. So you could actually maybe even revisit your design a little bit or revisit sections of your documentation. So I hope this one's been useful. I'm pretty sure it has been. And again, before these things take our jobs, let's enjoy them while they're here and hopefully make a little bit more profit um, so we can uh, we can survive when we're unemployed. <laughs> Hope that helps and um, catch you in the next one.